I want to start off by saying how honored I am to speak. It's a huge privilege for me, and I've had a lot of privileges in my life. I came to St. John's in fourth grade from Susie E. Tolbert Elementary, a school where most students couldn't do basic addition and less than a quarter passed each grade. I was lucky enough to afford the opportunities that St. John's had to offer. St. John's became my home because of the love the teachers gave me, as well as the high academic expectations they had for me. And not to name any names, but Mrs. Morgan, Mrs. Franzoni, and Mrs. Heath were my favorite back then. <laughs> that year, I decided I wanted to go to Duke University after I graduated St. John's. My mom told me, you have to work hard if you want to go to Duke, and that's when I set my goal. Also that year, I met the people I would be spending the next eight years of my life with, and some of them turned out to be my best friends. Since then, all of us have come a long way. When I decided to go to St. John's, Michael Jackson was still alive, and the top-selling movies were Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince and Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs. The Marvel Cinematic Universe began then with the release of Iron Man, and the MCU ended this year, the year of our graduation, with Avengers Endgame. Even before that, most of my classmates came to St. John's during the founding of YouTube, years before the founding of the first iPhone and Netflix streaming. Most of my classmates came to St. John's when America was celebrating its first legal gay marriage, a huge step for human rights. Starting with Massachusetts, gay marriage became legal in all 50 states during my time at St. John's. Looking back to Gonzales v. Raich in 2005, the Supreme Court ruled that under the Commerce Clause of the U.S. Constitution, Congress may criminalize the production and use of medical cannabis. Contrast to today, when Washington just passed a law that requires judges to grant requests to vacate misdemeanor marijuana charges that occurred before legalization. Who would have known back in those days that within the time we spent at St. John's, we would, have, we would have cars that can drive and park themselves safely? Who would have known back then that we would be able to program stem cells, that we would discover the largest black hole known to man, that we would confirm the existence of such strange phenomena as dark matter and gravitational waves? or that we would land a rocket after sending it to outer space. And what will we do? Someday, somebody is going to be talking at their graduation, or at the dinner table, or at a party, or talking to somebody late at night about the marvelous advancements in technology and society and how far we've come. And we're going to be the ones that they're talking about. It's our turn to change the world. With all that said, St. John's gave us the tools to achieve whatever we want. And that was made clear to me from the end product of the senior symposiums, with topics ranging from tax reform to mental health awareness. St. John's certainly wasn't easy. The hardest class I ever took at St. John's was computer programming one and two, not because they were challenging, but because they were online classes and taught me how to manage my time without a teacher's supervision. The easiest class I ever took at St. John's was AP Statistics. Not necessarily because there was no homework, which there was plenty of, or easy tests, which were few and far between, but because our teacher, Mr. Cox, expected so much of us that not doing homework and not studying for tests simply was not an option. The same can be said about many other teachers. I would like to extend some thank yous. I want to thank Coach Hilliard for teaching me how to not get caught without a belt, but also to own up to my wrongs. I want to thank Mrs. Knapp for teaching me how to chew gum silently, but also be vocal about what I believe in. I want to thank Mr. Knapp for teaching me dinosaurs aren't real, and more importantly, to never stop questioning. I want to thank Dr. Rahman for putting me in the same group freshman year as someone who would be my high school best friend, I want to thank Dr. Montague for separating me and him next year <laughs> so friends outside of class. And I want to thank Mr. Fisher for letting us sit together again for our senior year. <laughs> I want to thank Mrs. Fountain for teaching me that there are no shortcuts around hard work to doing well in the class. I want to thank Mr. Cox for teaching me to make eye contact. I want to thank Mr. O for teaching me to pay attention in class and not get caught off guard by the ever-elusive O'Sullivan Whoop. I want to thank the maintenance staff for making sure that our campus is clean and in working order, even when we broke some stuff. 
I want to thank my classmates for giving St. John's the best student body I could ask for. There's a lot of things I'm going to miss, and I'm sure I'm going to miss them more as time goes on. I'm going to miss trying my best to be on time to singers every morning. <laughs> I'm going to miss Coach Hilliard holding the door to the upper school in the morning, and Mr. Cox and Mr. O holding the door after play. And I'm going to miss hearing people sing happy birthday to Joseph Shimko every day. <laughs> I'm going to miss trying to contain my first grader's excitement when she sees me every morning. Aww. I'm going to miss Mrs. Garrison's reading checks, even on the days I forgot to read. I'm going to miss Mrs. Herlock's grueling in-class essays and Mr. Cox's do nows, especially when I was early to class and got a head start. I'm going to miss running through the halls the night before senior prank day, sticking forks in the quad and putting Coach Hilliard's stapler in jello. <laughs> I'm going to miss walking through the halls at any day of the week and knowing anyone I pass. I'm going to miss eating lunch with my best friends every day. I'm even going to miss about I'm even going to miss worrying about getting into college. However stressful that was. It was motivating to have a goal set and be surrounded by people with similar goals. Now that all of us are about to embark and reap the benefits of our high school goals, I encourage all of you to set expectations and continue striving towards more goals of your own. In the future, we will, be, we will all be sitting at our kids' graduation or our grandkids' graduation, and we'll ask ourselves, which of our goals did we achieve? And what, what did we do for their generation? I will leave you with a quote from Henry David Thoreau. He says, if you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. We already have our castles in the air, the castles built by our hard work and our dedicated teachers, and the next years will be the foundation for the rest of our lives. Now go, enter this new world with alacrity and curiosity, but also enter with gratitude for the deeds of the people who got you here. Thank you all for an unforgettable high school experience, and I can't wait to see where these next few years take us.